hello students welcome to our online video tutorial class so i think you have seen the previous videos in which videos i have discussed about the structure of the flower as well as the structure of anther of this chapter this is the second chapter that is a sexual reproduction in flowering plant so i have started with that specific portion that is the structure of flower and structure of anther so today i am starting with the next portion that is the structure of pollen sac you can see here in the structure of the pollen sac they have following the layers outer one is commonly known as epidermis next there is another layer that is known as endothecium third there is a layer that is a parenchymal cell layer next there is another layer that is tapetum and the fifth one another one that is the microspore mother cell so let's see whatever this specific layer signifies first of all epidermis it is the outermost protective cell layer and that is made up of epidermal cells keep it in your mind epidermis is a such kind of outer protective cell layer and that is made up of epidermal cells next thing is that endothecium is the another layer which is actually present inside epidermis and keep it in your mind this endothecium is actually another protective layer also like the epidermis and this endothecium is made up of endodermal cells like that epidermis is made up of epidermal cells but endothecium is made up of endodermal cells and these epidermal and endodermal cells which are present in case of root also like those this specific type of cells are also present in this layer next parenchymal cell layer what is that parenchymal cell layer is another layer where only the parenchyma tissue or parenchyma cells are only present like the parenchyma cells are present in the leaf also so those specific parenchyma tissue like cells they are actually having this uh, present in this specific cell layer and keep it in your mind due to presence of this parenchyma tissue they are obviously containing the chloroplast and for that reason they can perform the photosynthesis even and they can produce the food also next tapetum inside the parenchymal cell layer if you enter obviously you will see that there is another layer that is commonly known as tapetum keep it in your mind this tapetum is made up of elongated cells keep uh, this specific cells are elongated shaped and they are exclusively present there for providing the nourishment to the microspore mother cell w what is microspore mother cell microspore mother cell is a precursor of the microspore or the pollen grain these specific type of cells are actually present centrally to the each and every pollen sac and for providing the nourishment to the microspore mother cell obviously tapetum is present there surrounding them and this each and every cell of the tapetum is uh, elongated obviously and this microspore mother cell they are start actually uh, their division their growth and after when they will be just further get, getting mature on that time they have formed the structure of the pollen grain present within the pollen sac so this is the overall layers or these are the overall structures present in case of pollen sac now we are just moving for the structure of the pollen grain or rather we can say that is a microspore structure so let's see first of all in case of microspore we we need to remember about their shape the first thing is that they are actually showing oval or round or triangular shape most of the pollen grains are showing oval or round shape triangular shape is very rare but it can be found for some of the flowers keep it in your mind this pollen grain is commonly composed of following structures whatever the structures first structure is exine that is the outermost layer next there is another layer inside the exine that is intine next there is a presence of vegetative cell layer or vegetative cell even next there is a presence of generative cell these two specific cells are actually present in the cytoplasm of the pollen grain next there is a presence of callose wall next germ pore and germ furrow this two small small as another one bigger pore like structure which are present on the surface of exine so let's see about the structure of the egg entire pollen grain first one that is the exine whatever i have told exine is the outermost protective covering it is obviously present for the protection keep it in your mind it can be spinous as well as it is containing the groove or it can contain also furrows so due to presence of these specific structure spinous groove furrow obviously that specific outer layer is actually getting protective next keep it in your mind this exine layer is commonly made up of a specific kind of protein that is known as poropollenin and due to presence of this specific type of poropollenin protein obviously the pollen grain is getting so much 
protective because due to presence of the sporopollenin, the pollen grain entire structure or internal structures will be well protected. In the extreme environmental condition also this sporopollenin is, pollenin is protecting the internal structures of the pollen grain. Next exine layer which is actually the outermost layer that is divided into two layers already it is written here one is sex sign that is the outer one and another one is neck sign that is the inner one. Next, in case of uh, some of the flowers pollen grain, their exine is secreting some sticky substances. Those are commonly known as pollen kit. So why this pollen kit is actually present? This pollen kit is actually present for getting attached with the insect body during the time of cross pollination. So that sticky substance that is a pollen kit is having in some of the pollen grains which are pollinated by the help of cross pollination. If you are entering within the next layer, you will be getting that is in time, it is the inner layer of exine and this specific layer again it is subdivided into two layers like the exine but specifically the names are not needed of these layers. Next and the most important thing of the intine is this intine layer is responsible for forming the pollen tube because during the time of the male gametophyte development this specific pollen tube only it is coming out from the intine because intine layer is only protruding out and forming the club shaped pollen tube which is coming out through the exine. So intine is actually having that specific function to produce the pollen tube. Next slide you can see at the first that is a vegetative cell that is a type of cell which is present in the cytoplasmic portion of the pollen grain and this specific cell is compared to the another cell it is larger in size and another more important thing is that this specific cell is present for providing the nourishment to the male gametes. From where the male gametes have come generative cell will be further dividing into two male gametes. So those male gametes are obtaining their nourishment from this vegetative cell. Next. We can see another cell that is a generative cell that is also present in the cytoplasm but keep it in your mind these specific cells are smaller in size and they are only producing the male gametes by the mitosis cell division. So when they are dividing mitotically on that time only they are actually producing the male gametes. Callous wall this, this is a specific type of wall which is actually separating the vegetative cell and generative cell from each other. Keep it in your mind this specific wall is actually made up of complex sugar that is callose and that specific wall is only separating these two cells in the present in the cytoplasm. Next there is presence of germ pore. What is about the germ pore? Germ pore is a small pore like structure which is present on the surface of exine and this pore why it is present because of when the pollen grain will be landing over the surface of stigma on that time that a pollen grain is absorbing the nutrients from the surface of stigma. So those nutrients are actually entering within the pollen grain through this specific pore like structure. Next another porous structure is present that is germ furrow but keep it in your mind these pores are compared to the germ pore these pores are larger in size ok the diameter is more. And keep it in your mind how many germ pores also will be present on the surface of exine that much or that many germ furrow will not be there obviously the number of the germ furrow will be less than the germ pore. So germ furrow is actually present so that the pollen tube which is forming from the intine layer that can come out through that specific structure ok through that specific structure means through the germ furrow. So, these are the overall structural features whatever we have studied exine, intine, then vegetative and generative cell present in the cytoplasm and callose wall, germ pore and germ furrow. These are the overall structures present within the pollen grain. Going for the next topic, in the next topic it is written that we will be discussing about the microsporogenesis or formation of pollen grain. So first of all we have to know what is microsporogenesis. Obviously the process of microspore or pollen grain formation from microspore mother cell that is commonly known as microsporogenesis or pollen grain formation. So let us see, uh, we can see here in this slide there are four different steps by which the microspore or pollen grain can be produced from the microspore mother cell. So let us see whatever the steps. First of all we have written microspore mother cell which are having 2n number of chromosome containing and this microspore mother cell divides first of all by the meiosis 1 cell division and then meiosis 2 cell division. When the microspore mother cell is dividing meiotically by the meiosis 1, obviously it will be forming microspore dyad. Dyad means 2, that means 2 microspore mother cells are actually joining with each other. 
then when the microspore diode has entered within the meiosis 2 then it will be forming the structure that is microspore tetrad that means four microspore cells are actually present in a tetrahedral arrangement and that specific structure is commonly called as microspore tetrad keep it in your mind four microspores are there and they are actually having the tetrahedral arrangement that's why this kind of name has been given now from this microspore tetrad when single single microspores are getting separated from each and every one obviously those microspores are considered as a functional microspore because these specific microspores are getting activated these microspores or pollen grains now they have the capability to pollinate or to get transferred to the surface of stigma so for that reason when those microspores are present in the tetrad form on that time they were not functional but when they are getting separated from each other or they are getting dissociated obviously they are getting functional and each and every microspore or pollen grain will start functioning as a single single unit for pollination going to the next slide in this slide we can discuss about the development of the male gametophyte what is about the development of the male gametophyte first of all the pollen grain has been formed by the process of microsporogenesis but after formation of the pollen grain by the microsporogenesis obviously that pollen grain has to be transferred on the surface of stigma and when it is getting transferred on the surface of the stigma after that from the entire layer of the pollen grain the pollen tube is forming and the formation of the pollen tube from the entire layer of the pollen grain that is commonly called as male gametophyte development so let's see whatever the developmental stages or developmental processes of male gametophyte first of all we can see here the pollen grain it is first of all divides mitotically and for that reason only the vegetative cell and generative cell these two kind of cells are actually produced within the cytoplasm of the pollen grain so we have discussed about the structure of the pollen grain there we have seen what is vegetative cell that is responsible for providing the nourishment and generative cell that is responsible for providing the or uh, responsible for producing the male gametes but keep it in your mind this vegetative and generative cells were not present from initial time these two cells are actually produced by mitotic cell division from the pollen grain now these two cells vegetative and generative cells are getting separated by each other by the help of callous wall already that also we have studied but when the developmental process will start first of all this callous wall will get dissolved because if the callous wall will not get dissolved further the procedure cannot move forward so for that reason the callous wall has got dissolved next pollen grain in that condition containing vegetative and generative cell uh, with dissolved callous wall that is landing on the surface of stigma obviously if the pollen grain is getting accepted by the stigma then pollen grain absorbs the sticky secretion from the surface of the stigma that pollen grain absorbing the sticky secretion from the surface of stigma just it will absorb in time layer of the pollen grain that will comes out through the germ furrow that also we know and obviously for coming out through the germ furrow that is actually forming the pollen tube now the point is after formation of the pollen tube the vegetative cell nucleus that is entering within the pollen tube first of all out of the vegetative cell and generative cell the vegetative cell nucleus only it is entering within the pollen tube initially then generative cell nucleus dividing mitotically because generative cell actually containing haploid number of chromosome the nucleus are haploid number of con chromosome containing so they will divide mitotically so that they will be producing two haploid male gametes so just they will be making two haploid male gametes obviously those two male gametes now start entering within the pollen tube by following the vegetative cell nucleus so first of all when the vegetative and generative cell has got separated by the help of callous wall after that when the pollen tube has been formed then vegetative cell nucleus it will actually enter within the pollen tube at first and then by following the vegetative cell nucleus the generative cell is also getting divided into two male gametes and those male gametes will be entering within the pollen tube by following vegetative cell why the vegetative cell has entered at first the reason behind it is the vegetative cells are exclusively present for providing the nourishment to the male gametes so for that reason they have to move first within the pollen tube then by following them obviously the two male gametes will be entering within the pollen tube so i think the developmental process of the male gametophyte we have all understood in a proper manner now we are just going for the next slide 
next slide is actually talking about the pollen uses or the importance as well as whatever the diseases can happen from the pollen so first thing is that we all know that pollens are rich in nutrients they are containing so many type of proteins so for that reason obviously the pollens are rich in nutrients uh, from the pollens nowadays the tablets are also made pollen tablets those are commonly told and these pollen tablets are considered as a food supplement because these are pollen tablets are containing uh, the huge quantity of the protein so when it is containing huge quantity of the protein obviously it will be used or it can be used as a food supplement next pollen nowadays it can be used for producing the syrup also this syrup is also acting as a food supplement it is providing us more nourishment so that we will be getting more energy during our work as well as in the last point it is written you can see everyone pollen is responsible for increasing energy in athletes and resources so if some specific type of drink energy drink if anyone will uh, have before running or before taking part within any kind of athletics or in case of resource also it is applicable that means that specific energy drink is containing pollen why the energy drink is containing the pollen because pollen is containing a huge quantity of the protein so when the protein you are taking in a higher quantity obviously that protein you will be providing us energy when we will be doing any strenuous activity obviously that specific protein food or the protein component which is present within the energy drink and which has obtained from the pollen that will be broken down and the, from there we will be getting the energy by the process of respiration next it is written the whatever the type of diseases also can happen from the pollen from the pollen obviously some people have the allergy so pollen allergy it can happen as well as from there the bronchial infection that means the infection in the primary and secondary bronchi which is present nearby or within the lung so those specific bronchial structure can be get infected the inner wall due to the pollen because pollen is actually considered as an allergen so obviously when they are considered as an allergen obviously they are causing allergy next chronic respiratory disorder that means if anyone has the pollen allergy they can have such kind of respiratory disorders also and that is chronic okay for a long time from due from the birth time they are having this kind of disorder like that asthma bronchitis this kind of diseases also can have within any individual for the pollen grain from the time of birth so these are the diseases which are have actually occurring for the pollen grains okay going for the next slide in the next slide you can see properly about the viability of the pollen grain viability of the pollen grain means the we are talking about the capability of the pollen grain up to which specific time that specific pollen grain remain capable or remain viable so that it will pollinate any other specific flower so that specific phenomena that specific type of property of the pollen grain is known as viability that means up to how much time that pollen grain remain active so that it can pollinate any other flower and it can help in the po pollination process rather so pollen viability it is always depending on the temperature and humidity keep it in your mind if in any of the environment the temperature is very high or temperature is very low as well as if humidity is very high or humidity is not even present the weather is very dry on that time obviously the pollen viability should not be maintained in a proper manner so keep it in your mind the temperature and humidity these two factors are very much necessary and optimum temperature and optimum humidity that is the intermediate temperature and intermediate humidity will be always required for maintaining the activity or viability of the pollen grain here some examples have been given also in case of wheat and rice this kind of cereals the pollen viability most of the time it is present 30 minutes in case of rosaceae leguminosae and solanaceae plants this pollen pollen remain viable for few months as well as pollen can be preserved within liquid nitrogen in the uh, temperature of minus 196 degree celsius so that is commonly known as cryopreservation so that means pollen can be cryopreserved also for maintaining its viability maybe it is kept within the liquid nitrogen in minus 196 degree celsius temperature but keep it in your mind they can be frozen but they cannot be get inactivated they remain active also after so many years so for that reason this cryopreservation process is so much necessary okay so this is the pollen viability it can uh, vary from plant to plant obviously and the viability is always depending on the temperature as well as humidity keep it in your mind next we are going for the 
structure of pistil structure of the pistil we have already discussed about the structure of androsium in the uh, previous of this video so here we will be start discussing about the structure of pistil so let's see first of all we can see here the pistil is commonly made up of following structures whatever the structure that is the first one that is the stigma next one that is the style and the third or the lower portion that is ovary so please keep it in your mind that first of all what is stigma stigma is the upper stage like structure always it is present towards the upper portion of the uh, pistil or purple so it is obviously a stage like structure why because it is actually responsible for landing the pollen grain on it so for that reason they are actually uh, stage like structure or platform like structure showing this space for obviously for the pollen landing already I have told and keep it in your mind on the surface of the stigma the sticky secretion is always present so that the pollen grain which is coming on the surface that can adhere properly next you can see that is a style style is the filament like structure this is a filament like structure in the figure you can see just under the stigma this is a filament through which actually the pollen tube can run or it can proceed during the time of pollination so for that reason style is present as well as style another function is to hold the stigma portion that is also another function and the lowermost portion this is the ovary keep it in your mind this ovary is forming the fruit in future and keep it in your mind within the ovary there is a partition and that partition or the membrane like structure which is present that is commonly known as placenta keep it in your mind so many ovules that means the units of ovary those, those ovules are remain attached with the placenta and these ovules in future only producing the seeds okay within the fruit and keep it in your mind each and every ovule is attached to the placenta by the help of a stalk like structure that is commonly known as funicle or funicle so you can see here in this diagram also this is the entire ovary that is subdivided into two chambers and within the chamber obviously these are the ovules and they are actually arranged in a flower like manner okay and in middle there is a partition or wall that specific partition or wall is called as placenta from where the uh, ovules are remain actually attached by the help of funicle or funicle so this is the overall structure of the pistil or purple going for the next slide in the next slide you can see about the types of ovary based on the number of chambers whatever the types of ovary based on the number of chambers let's see first of all uh, here the specific word it is used that is locule locule means actually the chamber so based on the number we have segregated the entire ovary into multiple types so if that ovary is containing single chamber only that is that will be considered as a unilocular ovary that means there is no placenta that's why only the, it is unilocular if there are two locules or two chambers are present that means single placenta is present and if there are three locules or three chambers are present that means it is a trilocular if there are more than three locules that means four locules are present or chambers are present obviously they are known as tetralocular if more than four locules or chambers are present then it is known as pentalocular and if more than five chambers are present in that ovary on that time that specific ovary is known as polylocular that means based on the number of locule or chamber only we have classified the ovary into this six different types going for the next slide in the next slide you can see types of flower based on the number of carpels so here we will be discussing about the carpel uh, based on their association or based on their number how many types of flower we can see first of all here also if single carpel is present that means in case of that flower obviously uh, that will be called as monocarpellary bicarpellary flower means they are having two carpels tricarpellary flower means they are having three carpels tetracarpellary flower means they are having four carpels pentacarpellary flower means they are having five carpels and polycarpellary flower means they are having more than five carpels so that means based on the number of carpels also we have differentiated the flower into these six different categories monocarpellary bicarpellary tricarpellary tetracarpellary pentacarpellary and polycarpellary going for the next that is the types of flower based on the fusion of purples now that means now we have discussed about the number of purples we have got the type of flowers now based on the fusion of purples how many flowers we can see or how many types of flowers we can see mainly there are two type of flowers can be found one is 
syncarpus another one is apocarpus keep it in your mind apocarpus flower is a type of flower where the carpels are all free they are not united even they are not connected even with each other so they will be known as apocarpus flower and another type of the flower that is where the carpels are united with each other and they are forming a single unit so those kind of flowers are commonly known as syncarpus flower so fusion of the carpels in the flower so obviously they will be known as syncarpus flower so i think up to this specific slide we have understood all the points whatever we have discussed we have started from the structure of pollen sac we have discussed here about the entire layers of the pollen sac epidermis endothelium parenchymal cell layer tapetum microspore mother cell everything then we have discussed about the pollen grain in case of that outer layer is exine then intine is present and inside the cytoplasm there are two type of cells vegetative cell and generative cell which are separated from each other by the help of callus wall then there is a presence of germ pore and germ furrow on the surface of exine then we have discussed about the microsporogenesis that means the formation of the pollen grain then we have discussed about the how the pollen grain when it is landing on the surface of stigma from their pollen tube is forming and how the various cell like structures are coming within the pollen tube that we have discussed in this specific point in these two slides next we have discussed about the uses of the pollen grain as well as whatever the type of diseases can happen for from the pollen grain next we have discussed how much time the pollen remain viable and that is obviously depending on some of the factors like temperature and humidity in case of some plants how much pollen viability can be found that also we have discussed and cryopreservation how it is helping for maintaining the viability that also we have discussed next we have discussed about structure of pistil there are three portions stigma style and ovary whatever their basic structures structural configuration that we have discussed next we have discussed about the types of ovary based on the number of chamber so you have seen here unilocular bilocular trilocular tetralocular pentalocular and polylocular type after that type of flowers we have seen based on the number of carpels obviously monocarpellary bicarpellary tricarpellary tetracarpellary pentacarpellary and polycarpellary flowers and at last we have discussed about the types of flower based on the type of fusion if the carpels are fused then it is known as syncarpus flower if the carpels are not fused in case of any of the flower those are known as apocarpus flower so today we are finishing our video up to this slide in the next video we will be discussing or start discussing from the point that is the structure of the ovule and uh, so on so i think you have understood the entire video and you have enjoyed this video a lot so thank you everyone.